start by you sharing a little bit about how you enter this discipline and and your journey to where you're you are currently in your role. So uh, I went into university and went into engineering and and honestly uh, sort of fell into mining engineering. So I ended up moving into mining and and really it also brought together two of the things that I really enjoy, especially on the processing side of things, which were geology and chemistry. So went into mining engineering, went into mineral processing as the option. Uh, I went to Queen's University and I graduated in 1998 uh, in a downturn. I worked for Port Longyear, which is a drilling company in the exploration side of things. And I moved over to, to INCO working in their research lab. Worked there for about a year and a half. And my goal uh, when joining INCO was um, I, you know, Research was interesting, but really, I really wanted to get into uh, operations. I worked for, in Thompson, Manitoba for five years, and I moved through uh, from process engineer up to mill manager. And then after that, I ended up moving back to, to the corporate office in business development. So moved into capital projects to look at studying uh, project manager to, to study the sort of the next generation of, of potential mines uh, for, for INCO, specifically in the Manitoba area, and ended up uh, joining Royal Nickel in 2010. At the time, uh, Royal Nickel was uh, has uh, had a deposit in Quebec uh, called the Dumont Deposit, uh, and it was very similar in style to the work that I had been doing with Valet on the uh, deposits up in Thompson. And it was sort of my, my niche, which is ultramafic uh, nickel recovery, and uh, moved over as VP operation, VP metallurgy, and then transitioned to VP operations about a year after that. Um, I've been with Royal Nickel now for almost eight years and in looking at moving it through studies from scoping to feasibility to permitting um, and also uh, going through a series of acquisitions in terms of buying an operating mine in Australia as well as uh, buying 30% of the reed mine in Manitoba and acquiring some additional exploration properties. So it's been a bit of a transition since I uh, joined Royal Nickel in terms of, of the company um, as well as my role. And uh, yeah, that's that's where I am today. What I find interesting, of course, uh, everybody knows that mining is boom and bust, and, and you touched on that a little bit. Can you talk a little bit about what's in your perspective some of the current challenges in, in mining are, and, and perhaps even some points that you would see uh, in terms of being able to address some of those issues? I think um, in general that, that that whole ability to deal with a cyclical industry um, is very challenging and it's not and, you know, it, it affects everything. It affects everything from from exploration um, to financing to financing to capital projects and and even into hiring and diver and, and look at diversity within within the sector. You know, we talk about diversity and a lot we focus on women or or indigenous personnel or um, that sort of thing, but you know, just age diversity. We have a lot of people in the industry that are quite um, that are quite old, sort of in that plus twenty five year uh, experience range. We have a lot of people in the industry that are under ten years, um, but because of the way that the cycle went boom bust and and the decline in hiring in the late nineties and uh, the early two thousands, there really is um, quite a few people missing. Because the issue is, is once new graduates don't get hired into the industry, they don't come back. Um, so new graduates that don't get hired into the industry um, and look elsewhere for employment, um, generally, you know, when the when the boom is happening again, they they don't come back, and so we end up with these real gaps in employment. Um, that that doesn't help when you're trying to you know develop your next round of senior management. So you're going to be taking part, of course, uh, in the plenary or the the 2018 CAM convention in Vancouver. Can you talk a little bit about what you'll be addressing during your portion of the plenary? During my portion of the plenary, I will be addressing a diversity within the sector. We will be looking at um, the workforce, um, you know, in terms of, of the aging workforce, and how we're going to be able to and how we're going to be able to fill that up. Um, and then, as well as you know, looking at some of the main roadblocks to filling that up, looking at where these people are going to come from and how we're going to train them. And of course, the the theme is think differently. So, from your perspective, in terms of uh, what that means for mining, definitely what we're doing right now. Um, isn't working is it isn't perfect and and you know it's getting better i think we've increased female participation within the workforce from sort of 14 percent to 17 or 18 percent over the last uh let's say 10 years or so um, but that's a pretty small gain comparatively to the average uh you know the fact that women make up 47 percent of the workforce um so so obviously what we're doing right now is is making incremental change but there's nothing that's really making major changes. Um so you definitely we're going to have to look at 
how can we make step changes and uh, and and how can we make step changes to get more people involved it's uh, you know I do believe that we come out with our best outcomes and if we talk about these other challenges such as um, being innovative and um, and and changing the way the industry is uh, and thinking differently I don't know if we can do that if we don't have the diversity of employ of employment of the diversity of people working in the industry I, it's hard when everybody is sort of thinking exactly the same and, and not being and, and been in the industry for so long um, it's hard to come up with new ideas because everything seems so uh, so fixed and and I, even I struggle with this you know I've been in the industry for 20 years we had recently had a, uh, a meeting at the, the Canadian Mining Innovation Council for mineral processing and you know some of the things people talk about such as you know reduction of tailings of 50 percent and uh, <laughs> you know my first response is well that's crazy you can't do that um, and that's the problem like I'm part of the problem in terms of we need to get people in from other industries we need to get people in with different thoughts and different points of view um, because otherwise we're never you know it's very difficult to think differently when you've been doing the same thing for 20 years uh, I think we need to look at how we can increase increase the diversity within the industry so that we get a, a bigger thought base so we get people who maybe aren't as familiar with the way we've been doing things for the, for the last hundred years and can come in with some different ideas and that's going to need a lot of uh, it's going to need a lot of encouragement by people like like me and like others within the industry that are willing to consider these ideas and and not just uh, we've done it this way for 100 years we'll keep doing it this way but I don't think we're going to be able to achieve uh, you know really making shift happen unless we can start to diversify the workforce. What would you say to those new engineers, people who are just entering the industry? What advice would you give them uh, in terms of uh, being new members of, of, of this community? I, I think my biggest advice would be stay involved. Um, I think one of the biggest things that is really in terms of my, my network and my ability to meet people and, and just generate a, a really large um, working network where I can go to various different peoples and various different portions of the industry is really staying involved with these technical societies. Um, I've been a member of CMP and CIM now since 1997 uh, when I was a student. And I've been involved um, within my local regional branches, as well as with now within the national branch of the Canadian Mineral Processors as the chair for uh, 2017 and 2018. And I do think that that's the one piece is um, you can become, the mining industry can be somewhat isolating. We, we mine in remote locations. Uh, we all work in um, plants that maybe only have one or two metallurgists, um, that maybe only have on the mining side a couple of mining engineers. Um, to be able to come up with these different ideas and to be able to network and meet people and see um, portions of the different portions of the industry, I think it's really important to try to stay as involved as possible and allowing allowing that involvement to help you network and develop a, a large a large network of people that you can talk to. That sort of networking is really important. Um, and I think that you know it's one thing that a younger engineer uh, could do coming into the industry is is do that and if you know you can't make it to the national meetings um, the local regional branches are a great place to start. Mm -hmm.